The hardest thing to do is to be true to yourself, especially when everybody's watching. Yes, yes. It almost seems like it was more of peace of mind than it was about money. When you think of the most powerful people in the entertainment industry, which name pops up first? With a career spanning decades, Oprah has made tons of fans and haters along the way. What about the people she's offended? What happens to them? Only a few are brave enough to stand up against her. Here's how it goes. I was comfortable with. Mm -hmm. You know, I found a way to, to do what I like to do and avoid some of the parts of it that I was uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. What were you uncomfortable with? TV show host and multi-billionaire has an impressive track record of offending artists. Fame and infamy come hand in hand, so it's definitely inevitable. Comedian Dave Chappelle has always been honest about his feelings towards the Hollywood elite, your favorite TV show host included. He's a different kind of comedian, someone who really isn't afraid to speak his mind and share his feelings no matter the backlash. Dave, along with other important names, reveals that she has been doing dirty work. Apparently, she has been using black actors to build a billion-dollar empire then throw them under the bus. So it seems that the talk show host is using her fame and her situation to use other celebrities and not paying them their dues. At the same time, it's been said that she has more problems than just this. Remember that time when there was a controversy surrounding her and an explosive episode of her Apple TV Plus series, The Oprah Conversation, aired? The episode in question featured former NFL star and race activist Emmanuel Acho, who joined her for a two-part conversation on racism and white privilege. One guest expressed concerns about grouping all white people together, emphasizing that not all of them have the same level of privilege. Similar to a foreign language, if if you're ever going to be fluent in something, you have to be immersed in that culture. She responded by acknowledging that not all white people have the same level of power, but emphasized that white privilege still exists, regardless of their position on the ladder of success. This sparked a firestorm on social media, and no one held back. Oprah ain't never been on our side. I'm so happy people are finally seeing it, one person said. While another person commented, the fact that she can do this to people knowing where she came from is insane. It truly is. Dave Chappelle's statements become more believable if you think about it, especially with all that went on with Monique. Everyone knows who she is, now that we're talking about her. From Maryland, and I saw this fat black woman on a TV show. We took a field trip to that studio, and I hugged that woman. And I said, when I- Remember her Mother's Day comedy special at the Apollo in Harlem? The actress and comedian didn't miss a beat when she went about being blackballed by Hollywood, naming names in the process. A fan shared a video of Monique's tirade, in which she addresses the talk show host, Tyler Perry, and Lee Daniels for tarnishing her career. Oh no, I was not blackballed. I was whiteballed. <laughs> by some who had no balls. Monique shed light on her stance and the reasons behind her decision not to engage in promotional activities at that time for Precious. She explained her conversation with her, stating, I'm doing a talk show. I'm doing a comedy tour. I have a husband and I have babies. I have a little bit of downtime and I'm going to take advantage of it. So I'm not going anywhere because I'm not obligated to go anywhere. I've done my part. However, the fallout resulted in her being labeled as difficult and hard to work with. Reflecting on her experiences, Monique highlighted the sacrifices people make for Hollywood and the toll it takes on personal relationships. She emphasized her awareness of the industry's history, where individuals sacrificed everything for fame, only to end up broken and lonely. Monique went on to reveal a somewhat apologetic encounter with the talk show host in 2014 at a party celebrating Lupita Nyong'o. This event marked their first meeting since she featured Monique's brother and parents on the show. Despite attempting to reach out to her to express her feelings of hurt and betrayal, Monique found no resolution. Now, I then get a call back from Lee Daniels and he said, wow, Oprah came up to me and said, you're right. She's really not impressed with all of this hoopla and awards. Monique claims that Tyler Perry has been dragging her name through the mud. According to her, Perry allegedly told director David Talbert about the difficulties of working with her. But hold on, there's more to this tale. She doesn't stop at just accusations. She adds more poignant commentary to the mix. Director Lee Daniels of Precious and Monique have a history of conflict, you know. 
The actress said that Daniels had offered her the part of the host in The Butler and the role of Cookie Lion on the popular program Empire back in 2015 when she was speaking with Sway on Sway in the Morning. Danny Strong, a co-creator of Empire, disputed that the comedian was ever entertained as a potential cookie. To me, this is something different. And I can't believe this person is going to trust me to do it. I but Daniels asserted in a 2015 interview with Don Lemon that Monique had blackballed herself. The director said, she's brilliant and I like working with brilliant people. She was making unreasonable demands and she wasn't thinking, this was when reverse racism was happening, I think. I told her, you have to thank the producers of the film, you have to thank the studios. And I think she didn't understand that. And I said, people aren't going to respond well if you don't. Monique, who clinched an Oscar for her powerful performance in Precious, has opened up about a long-standing feud with director Lee Daniels. According to Monique, their rift began when she inadvertently left Daniels out of her 2010 Academy Award acceptance speech for Best Supporting Actress. Since then, the two have been entangled in a highly publicized spat, with Monique suggesting that Daniels initiated a professional boycott against her. Initially, Monique claimed she was blackballed by Hollywood for her alleged demands and perceived difficult behavior during the 2010 award season, citing comments attributed to Daniels about her lack of campaign efforts for the film. However, during an appearance on the U.S. breakfast show Good Morning America, Monique shifted the blame squarely onto Daniels. When people look at me, they say, you are a fat black woman. How dare you speak up? She hinted that any challenges she faced were a result of being ostracized by the director himself, known for his work on Precious, The Butler, and The Paperboy. The drama behind the scenes is as intense as the roles she takes on screen. Privately, to include Oprah, all of y'all said privately, we, I've done nothing wrong. We out here in a game, this the money game. This ain't the black man's game. This ain't the white man's game. It's this is the, the money, money game. game. But I, we in the money game. game. But let me tell you what's the game. In a bold move, Monique chose family over the glitz of the Cannes Film Festival in 2009, prioritizing precious moments with her husband and four children. Amidst the hype of the 2009 to 2010 award season, the negative buzz surrounding her decision was fueled by financial concerns, as she revealed being paid a mere $50,000 for her work on the film Precious. Lionsgate representatives persistently urged her to attend the festival, triggering the media storm. Despite the challenges, Monique refuses to play the victim card, emphasizing her resilience during a candid moment on Good Morning America. If I had, the scripts and the calls would have stopped coming, because Hollywood is a small community, but they never stop coming, she said, adding, please don't feel bad or sorry for Monique because Monique doesn't feel bad or sorry for Monique. You would be wasting your energy. Hollywood might have offered her fewer roles since 2009, but she's making a powerful comeback. Brace yourself for Blackbird, an upcoming independent film exploring the struggles of a man grappling with his identity in a conservative Baptist community. Additionally, Monique takes on a supporting role as the legendary Ma Rainey in Bessie, an HBO drama starring Queen Latifah as blues icon Bessie Smith. Some are thinking that she and the other producers were the ones who started all the drama. According to a documentary filmmaker, she did a lot of shady things towards Monique. This is proven in the new film that narrates the relationship between Monique and her over the years. When Monique complained about the host not stepping up and helping a fellow black woman, the filmmaker claims that she used her power to have Mo blackballed in Hollywood. Even though nothing is totally proven, all evidence suggests that the statements made by comedian Dave Chappelle are practically true, now that we know what happened to Monique. It's instances like this that we're thankful for really blunt comedians. So did you know Dave Chappelle and her have come a long way? Back in the early 2000s, these two had quite a bond. Dave Chappelle is one of the most well-known and notable comedians of our time. His witty and smart comedy show sketch, Chappelle's Show, was a great Comedy Central hit, engaging millions of viewers. He shocked everyone in 2005, though, when he resigned from both his program and his $50 million contract, leading many to wonder what had become of him. What's going on with you? I want to meet your chief. When Chappelle first appeared on television with the billionaire TV host after Missing, he revealed the true reason behind his decision. He explained that contrary to what some rumors claimed, he wasn't crazy and was instead angry with the way his show was run. He felt that people were taking advantage of him and trying to make money off of him and that he was losing control over his creative vision. Oh, they leave. Now the producers comes, come on, David, would be so 
Great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. All the comics that I've seen, man, you know, strong brothers. Why, why did he, he said that he felt pressured and that he needed to escape the pressures and demands that came with his being a celebrity. In order to rekindle his connection to his religious history and his roots, he decided to fly to South Africa and spend two weeks in a spiritual retreat. He proclaimed that he intended to remain true to himself and his beliefs, even if it meant losing his program and his money. Even though he was not ruling out a comeback to his show, he mentioned that he has some conditions. Apart from wishing to contribute a portion of his earnings to the underprivileged, he also desired more freedom and honesty in his profession. He said he still loved comedy and making people laugh, but he also wanted to make a positive change. He certainly made it known that he was under a lot of strain after signing a $50 million agreement with Comedy Central to create a third and fourth season of his mega-hit Chappelle's show. And it's worth noting that he expressed his fear that some of his sketches had become socially irresponsible, as one of the reasons he left the show with only a few third-season episodes done. Of course, she did not take this the way Chappelle expressed it. Instead, she made him feel bad and kept pushing that it was probably all just stress or some sort of negligible problem. It was clear that the comedian was being serious for once, and she didn't respect it at all. Don't forget who I am. Don't forget what I am. I am a black dude. This happened a decade ago, and his fans still aren't letting it go. It's true that the interview didn't age well, as her response to Chappelle did not sit well with fans. In many parts of the show, Chappelle had to make it clear to her he wasn't crazy at all. Imagine opening up to the public and receiving this kind of backlash from none other than the host herself. We're wondering how the comedian kept his calm all throughout that ordeal. Fast forward years later, more things come in between Dave Chappelle and the TV show host. For example, the release of Dave Chappelle's comedy special, The Closer, on Netflix sparked the uproar. During the special, Chappelle made numerous controversial comments regarding the LGBTQ plus community, which sparked criticism and charges of transphobia. I am not saying that to say that trans women aren't women. Chappelle defended his comments by citing his dedication to free speech and the boundary-pushing nature of comedy. But not everyone agreed with his remarks, and when word got out on social media, the debate grew more heated. Here comes the hero. The media mogul, who is well known for her influence and advocacy activities, expressed her dissatisfaction with Chappelle's comedy special on social media. She attacked the material, saying it ignored the effects on the LGBTQ community and reinforced negative stereotypes. Her remarks fueled an already raging fire, igniting an unpleasant debate concerning the boundaries of responsible storytelling in comedy and free expression. I care whether you're tall or short or whether you were born um, uh, black or Asian mm -hmm. or gay. And so the public's reaction has been quite strong. Chappelle's supporters make the case for artistic freedom and the significance of using humor to subvert social conventions. However, others argue that some jokes might actually cause harm and discrimination in the real world. Therefore, they should be more careful with their language. These competing ideas now fight it out on social media, where discussions and hashtags rule the online conversation. How deep does the problem go? You have a couple of pets as well, yeah. a dog and a cat with interesting names, to say the least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Oprah. That's Oprah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Surprisingly, Dave isn't the first person to stand up against the billionaire. 50 Cent is also here and he's backed up Monique when she needed help, and now Taraji P. Henson too. Like the comedian, he accuses her of embarrassing and stealing from black actors, standing up for Monique and Taji against her. If you didn't already know, the rapper has had an ongoing beef with the talk show host for years. We all know 50 Cent has been at odds with numerous rappers, but his clash with her took everyone by surprise. The saga began way, way back. 50 Cent, with a not-so-clean background from Jamaica, Queens, sought to prove himself by appearing on the show. It meant a lot to him personally and would have shown his grandmother, a devoted fan, that he was making something productive out of his life. But when the idea was pitched to her, she made it clear that she wasn't interested in what 50 Cent had to offer. It was the largest debut in hip-hop album. You, you're looking at it and you're saying that everything this wrong with our culture is why I'm a success. Realizing she wouldn't be extending an invitation anytime soon, 50 Cent went full force on the talk show host. 
He berated her fan base and even went as far as naming one of his dogs the same name. The rapper explained that she never tried to understand his perspective, and this lack of empathy led to his offense and refusal to see things from her point of view. Apart from that, he's also defending Taraji from the talk show host. If you've been keeping up with the latest celebrity buzz, you probably heard about Taraji P. Henson's recent struggles after the end of Empire. It seems like she parted ways with her entire team for not capitalizing on her iconic character, Cookie Lion. The cost. You get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah. Or have to. Mm. The math ain't mathin'. Here to discuss this with me now is actress. But guess who's ready to step in and work with her? None other than the rap mogul himself, 50 Cent. 50 Cent took to Instagram to express his interest in working with Taraji P. Henson. He shared a screenshot of an article from Deadline, captioning it, They dropped the ball. I'm ready to work. Let's get it. It's not proven, but it looks like 50 Cent is again accusing her of using black actors to build her empire and then throwing them under the bus when she's done with them. This all comes after Henson opened up about Hollywood's pay disparity and how she felt shortchanged as a black actress. In an interview with the SAG-AFTRA Foundation, she expressed frustration over her team's failure to leverage the success of Cookie Lion. She even criticized them for not having post-Empire plans in place, like endorsements and commercial deals. It's been a topic of discussion since 2017 when Taraji P. Henson dropped bombshell revelations in her memoir about the pay disparity during the making of the 2014 movie, The Butler. Henson expressed feeling gutted as she discovered that her pay was significantly lower than her co-star and other white actors involved in the film. Where's my raise? I haven't, had, I haven't seen a raise in my income since Proud Mary. And since then, support has been pouring in. Kiki Palmer and Gabrielle Union have shared their solidarity with Taraji P. Henson. It's clear that there's a need for change in the industry, and Henson's courage to speak up is inspiring others to do the same. After all that backlash, it looks like she tried to apologize to the actress. Apparently, the host has addressed the controversy in an exclusive interview. She claimed she was completely unaware of the pay gap at the time, and asserted that she had no control over budgetary decisions or the actor's salaries. She explained that she trusted director Lee Daniels to handle those aspects of the production. The media mogul also shared that she reached out to Toronto Taraji P. Henson after reading her memoir, leading to a conversation between the two actresses. She stated that they have since cleared the air and that she still holds immense respect and admiration for Taraji. But what about 50 Cent? Or Dave Chappelle? Monique? Where is their apology? On a side note, there are also other celebrities who aren't fans of the host and her antics. Just like Ludacris. Ludacris made headlines when he publicly criticized her after a controversial interview on her primetime talk show. The rapper, known for his music and acting career, was initially refused an appearance on the show, but eventually got the chance to promote his movie Crash and discuss racial discrimination. I made it to Oprah, yeah. I made it on Oprah okay. a long time ago. Okay, so, yeah. I haven't made it back, but I was on there one time. <laughs> It all went down when Ludacris was on the show, and she decided to take him to task for the explicit language in his music, specifically words. Ludacris was reportedly stunned by her criticism, and who wouldn't be? The unexpected lecture on his choice of words left many fans and viewers shocked. She edited out a lot of my comments while keeping her own in. Of course it's her show, but we were doing a show on racial discrimination, and she gave me a hard time as a rapper when I came on there as an actor said Luda, real name Chris Bridges. Initially, I wasn't even invited to the show. She cut you off. Right, right. She right. cut you, she edited out what you had to say. Pretty much. Okay. Now it's clear that the accusations against her, particularly concerning her alleged mistreatment of black actors, have sparked debates and divided opinions. The experiences of figures like Monique and Taraji P. Henson shed light on the challenges faced by artists, especially those of color, in an industry that often demands sacrifices. Dave Chappelle, known for his unfiltered and honest approach, has been a vocal critic of her and has garnered support from others like 50 Cent. The stories of Monique and Taraji P. Henson echoes themes of inequality, pay disparity, and the struggles faced by black artists in Hollywood. While she has addressed the controversy with Taraji P. Henson, questions remain about her interactions with other figures like Dave Chappelle and Monique. The lack of apologies to these individuals adds complexity to the stories, leaving audiences to ponder the true dynamics behind the scenes of the entertainment world. This talk show host surely knows how to play the game, and it's no surprise because of how powerful she is. But in my career, it has happened many, many times since.
where someone would intimidate me or scare me and take something that I believe was mine. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. You know, we live in a world of social media and AI and all that, and this is what will endure. Hope will endure. Mm. Forgiveness will endure.